What's up, Mets fans? It's your boy CP here, back with another episode of the True Mets Talk podcast. As the Mets warm stove updates roll on, it is December 29th when you all will be viewing this. Presumably, I'm recording on December 28th, the evening of December 28th. For your context, in terms of if any news happens between now while I'm recording and when you all view this video, just be aware. Make sure you all are hitting that subscribe button, bottom right hand corner, as you're watching this video. If you haven't subscribed already, join the CP New York Sports Network and get your latest news surrounding this New York Mets team. Comment your thoughts and opinions and make sure you hit that like button. There's no better way to support the podcast outside of subscribing and hitting that like button. For more Mets talk and Mets, this Mets podcast updates, uh, make sure you go ahead and follow me on all my social medias at CPNY Sports. We've got a lot to get into, talking about the recent names that the Mets have been linked to, especially in the offensive market. We'll talk about the Mets 2024 outlook at the third base position. So like I said, a very opinionated, a very open-ended podcast. Make sure you hit that comment section, whether you agree with me or whether you do not agree with me. A friendly debate is always welcome. Without further ado, let's get into it. All right, let's get into it. I'm going to try to condense this podcast and the contents very, very into a very, very brief episode. But if I go on rambling it towards the tail end, please forgive me. Um, the Mets have been reported to be interested in J.D. Martinez as of recent. This comes at a very big shock to me personally, given the recent reports coming out about the Mets talking to Justin Turner in his camp, presumably for the DH spot. Maybe the, the what I can speculate and assume is that maybe the contract negotiations fell through with Justin Turner in his camp. Maybe Justin Turner wants a higher AAV or more years on a contract than the Mets are comfortable um, in terms of giving up for that 39-year-old right-handed bat in Justin Turner. J.D. Martinez, although given the injury history, that back, which is a concern, is a little bit younger um, and is just as capable of providing the Mets, any sort of production at the DH spot, which they thoroughly lacked in 2023. Now, J.D. Martinez is a familiar face um, to the New York Mets and the fan base because I think the collective fan base, um, from what I've seen, really wanted this guy in the Mets uniform in 2023 before he went to the Dodgers on that one-year deal. Well, he's now back on the open market after having a very solid season for the Dodgers. You see on your screen, 113 games. 271 batting average with 33 home runs. The slugging and OPS were phenomenal as well within those 113 games. He has been an all-star in each of the last three seasons, which is very rare to come across, especially with the guys that are still available on this market. Um, I understand that he's getting up there in age, but whether it comes to Justin Turner, and I dropped my Justin Turner videos on the podcast already when we're talking about the DH category, and J.D. Martinez, these guys that are higher up there in age, um, got a lot more legs under them in terms of experience and more experience under their belts. I, I'm not expecting any sort of defensive production out of these guys whatsoever. And I'll get into the third base sort of outlook here, but J.D. Martinez is not going to see the field. And Justin Turner, if he's signed, is not going to hit the field as well. Now, go back and tune into my last podcast episode on the True Mets Talk podcast because I basically stated – my reasonings for why I still think JD or Justin Turner rather is going to be a New York Met and why that might be more imminent than not. But like I said, this offseason has been wonky in terms of a New York Mets perspective. They have been linked to a lot of people and nothing really uh, concretely has come to fruition just yet. But JD Martinez certainly plays, certainly has pop. The Mets don't even need JD Martinez to get anywhere close to 33 home runs, anything north of 20 home runs out of the DH spot is a win within itself in comparison to what the Mets have had um, at that DH spot as of recent. So JD Martinez, keep an eye out on him uh, and a potential signing there. Talks are starting to ramp up just a bit. Next guy the Mets have shown interest in is Gio Urshela, veteran 32 year old in this league, ex Yankee and presumed ex angel. If he does not resign with the Los Angeles angels, this is a very, very interesting 
uh, report to me in terms of Gio Urshela. And I'll tell you why. At face value, if you bring Gio Urshela into the New York Mets in hopes that he's competing for that opening day starting third base spot, then I don't want him. Quite simply, if that's the case and he's going to be competing for Brett Beatty's reps in a potential starting spot come opening day with Brett Beatty, then I do not want him. If you're signing Gio Urshela to be a backup to Brett Beatty, maybe we get halfway through the season and Brett Beatty is putrid or he gets injured or he needs a day off and that's where Gio Urshela comes in, then sign me up. But let's 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 call a spade a spade here with Gio Urshela. His glove is great. We all know that. The Mets prioritize defense. Gio Urshela, uh, Urshela fits the bill in that category. 62 games in 2023 is not a great sample size. Hit 299 and two home runs to go along with it. Is he a capable bat? Yes. But outside of that average, there's not really much to want out of Gio Urshela. The OPS is bad. The slugging is not great at all. And he's got no pop in his bat. So what really do we want with Gio Urshela? Now, I put up a tweet on my X account saying just that, that I don't want Gio Urshela taking reps if the Mets truly are after him from Brett Beatty. And I will stand by that notion. And you are certainly welcome to disagree, whoever is viewing this. But when you have a guy like Brett Beatty, and we understand the Mets and the term bridge year, and the sort of offseason that they've been having so far, pretty much making it known to the fan base that winning the division isn't in the cards for 2024. They're waiting for 2025 and that offseason to bolster up this roster. So if that's the case, strictly speaking on bringing Gio Urshela into this team or onto this team to compete with Brett Beatty for that starting third base spot, then what are we doing here? Now, like I said, if the goal is to, you know, have him back Brett Beatty up, because I certainly don't think Mark Vientos is going to touch third base this season. I could be wrong. I don't think it's happening. Then that's a little bit of a different story. But for me, outside of defense, there's not much to be left desired with Gio Urshela in terms of his bat. So therefore, like I said, I don't think it's absolutely necessary. This is not someone that I would prioritize if I'm the Mets front office. Go get me a Justin Turner. Go get me a J.D. Martinez. Guys who will get me 20-plus home runs and be that immediate fill-in for the DH. All these depth pieces, right, we don't need to be prioritizing that. A method's left field, right? We don't know who the everyday left fielder is going to be. We got Tyrone Taylor out there to be the presumed fourth outfielder. But who knows if they're not committed to signing an everyday left fielder and Jeff McNeil sticking at second base, then we need to go get another bat there. Whether it's a big bat or a guy to platoon to Tyrone Taylor, at this point, I don't know what the answer is there. But I will say this. I do not want Gio Urshela anywhere near the starting spot at third base for the 2024 New York Mets. It is counterproductive to what this season is supposed to be all about. And no offense to Gio Urshela, I think he's a solid player, but he's a 32-year-old veteran who we know what we're going to get out of and is not going to be a long-term solution for this lackluster third base spot that the Mets have been trying to figure out for a couple of years now. So let's move on to these guys. I already said it. I don't think Mark Vientos is, I don't think he's going to be sniffing third base. I firmly believe that. I understand he's been working with Lindor this offseason. I understand he went to Puerto Rico. Lindor's a great glove, probably a great mentor as well. And that was much needed for Vientos to try to shore up his defense. But Lindor is not a magic, magic worker. He's not a miracle worker. There's a lot of mechanical issues wrong with Vientos out there, especially at third base. First base is a different story. He's feasible at first base, in my humble opinion. Third base, not cutting it for me. Um, so I don't see him being in the equation as a, as a third baseman for the New York Mets. Dan Beatty is the same story. 
He's got no defensive capabilities that we've been able to see at the major league level so far. But when it comes to both of these guys, we need to see what they have. Whether it takes Vientos playing at third base to get him at bats, then so be it. If it's DH, although that's not my first preference because I just mentioned I would love to see Justin Turner or J.D. Martinez get signed to be that everyday DH. But if it takes Mark Vientos getting at bats at the DH spot, then I'm all for it. I want to see these two guys get at bats for the longevity and the majority of the 2024 season because this is what this season's all about. Winning? That's icing on the cake. And I'm not saying the Mets have to prioritize losing. Never. I'll never say that. And I'll never root for them to lose. But if this is a true bridge year, which everything this offseason up until this point has told us that the Mets front office is treating it as, then why would you not want to see what these guys are truly capable of? Now, I understand Brett Beatty is 24 years old. He's, that, he's not that 21-year-old, 22-year-old phenom coming up that's made an immediate impact he's been absolutely abysmal but he hasn't even played a full 162 games at the MLB level yet he's he hasn't and I get that maybe I'm being a little bit lenient in terms of what we've seen in terms of expectations versus what the hype was of him coming up but in my humble opinion I I would have definitely explored or tried to explore a trade of Brett Beatty if that was feasible. And if they wanted to get a higher caliber third baseman this offseason, but they just simply weren't going to do that. That's not what this type of offseason is about. And you can't trade low on Brett Beatty in the first place. So let the kid get his reps and let's see what he's truly got. He got injured at the tail end of the 2022 season when he came up. He played about, what, 8 to 10 games, got injured, ended his season, and he didn't start the 2023 season on the 26-man roster. He got called up, struggled, went back down, and we didn't really see much of him after that. I want to see what he has because if the Mets don't have anything in him, they need to know because when the 2025 offseason comes around, the third base trade market around the league is going to present itself in a great way for the Mets to make a move there. And there's a couple of free agent targets out there that might hit the market for the Mets to prioritize as well if they want to move on from Brett Beatty. But in my opinion, as a front office guy, knowing that you haven't seen a full 162 from Brett Beatty yet, how can you move on from him concretely? especially in a year that you're not going out there and building a roster that's going to compete with the Dodgers, that's going to compete with the Braves or Phillies. It just makes no sense. So like I said, Gio Urshela on the topic of third baseman for the New York Mets in 2024, backup, okay, great. 32-year-old, great glove, can come in here and be an Escobar type with Brett Beatty and, and mentoring Brett Beatty, that's fine. But if we're talking about Gio Urshela as a starting third baseman potentially for the Mets in 2024, miss me with that. I'm sorry. I'm going to die on that hill. Whether people want to agree with me or not, that is my humble opinion. So let me know what you think in the comment section of anything that we talked about here today. Whether it pertains to J.D. Martinez, Gio Urshela, Brad Beatty, Mark Vientos, what have you. I want to hear what you all have to say because I keep these podcasts objective for the most part when I talk about the stats and these players' capabilities. But when it talks about what I, when it comes to talking about what I want to see with this Mets roster in 2024 and beyond, there's no one size fits all. And you can either agree with me or not and hit that comment section so we can have a healthy debate because I'm all up for it. Hit that subscribe button, comment your thoughts and opinions, and make sure to hit that thumbs up, that like button. Make sure you follow me for more podcast updates at CPNY Sports all around. I'm always trying to promote when I'm going live or when I'll be dropping another episode so you all don't miss out. If you want to hit the notifications button on my YouTube channel as well to get automatic notifications when I drop something or when we're going live, whether it be on here, the Interstate Mets Report, or the Mets Roundtable Podcast with Rob, Hayden, and Nelson. 
please, by all means, make sure to do so so you don't miss it. But I want to hear what you all have to think. J.D. Martinez, great option. Gio Arcella, to me, not so much if you expect him to start. He's another depth piece. And I have my reservations about Gio Arcella coming here to be a backup third baseman to Brett Beatty. And the simple fact of the matter is, regardless if you want to pull the plug on Brett Beatty or not, right now, given his lack of sample size in this league, I just simply don't think the Mets front office is in any position to do so. So, as always, let's go Mets. All of these reports are just hearsay until anything solid comes to fruition in terms of talks ramping up. But like I said, it just seems like the Mets front office right now is doing their due diligence on all fronts and nothing serious has come about just yet. It's sort of weird. We saw Justin Turner talks ramping up and then slowing down and now the pivot to J.D. Martinez. We saw that a little bit with the Michael A. Taylor situation earlier on this offseason and the inevitable trade happened for Tyrone Taylor and Adrian Hauser. Let's see if the Mets have a trick up their sleeves. As I said on the last Mets Roundtable podcast, the Mets hot stove live with, with Talking Mets with Rob. The Mets are quiet until they're not because we all know they like to surprise us with, with unforeseen trades. So hopefully they have a trick up their sleeves, whether it's for the rotation, the bullpen, or anybody, or any position in the position group, third base, left field, etc. Like, comment, subscribe. It's been another episode of the True Mets Talk podcast. Let's go Mets. It's your boy CP. I'm out. Thank you for watching the latest episode of the CP New York Sports Pod. If you enjoyed this content, make sure you hit that thumbs up, comment your thoughts and opinions, and use the lower right hand button of this video to subscribe to the channel. Thank you.